Hey everyone, it's Natalie. So I've already done one video. It was just a discussion of how you might feel or what you might be going through when you go no contact. This video is also focusing on no contact and that is what your brain goes through. If you went no contact because you're an empathetic person, the guilt of that no contact has your brain just like a hamster wheel. You find yourself arguing with yourself, trying to justify your actions. You find that you can't stop thinking about it. You're constantly all day just, you know, just thinking about it. And I think that's mainly because you have empathy. Because you tried to, um, determine if you made the right decision but then at the same time the guilt that you have from that just it's like this cycle of just trying to figure out if you overreacted if this is the right decision how your partner feels what you feel what the future looks like um what your children might be going through i mean it's just like everything but I found is I constantly was obsessing over the trauma. I kept obsessing over the things through the years that my narc had done to me and questioning why I allowed those traumas to happen because in some ways you're being a willing participant by staying in that relationship even after they started to abuse you. But then on the other hand, you're an unwilling participant because you didn't choose to be in this relationship with the narc. Somebody else chose you to be in this relationship because it's your spouse. You didn't go seeking for uh, a specific mother-in-law. No, you got handed the mother-in-law that came along with your spouse. And so I, you know, and when I say you're a willing participant of abuse, I don't mean it like you're just sitting back and saying that you wanted to be abused. What I mean by that is that when somebody, when the narc was crossing your boundaries, a lot of the times you didn't say anything when you wanted to because of the fear that you had uh, either not, you know, the fear of upsetting the family, the fear of upsetting the narcissist, the fear of upsetting your spouse or the children or your um, father-in-law or mother-in-law, whatever it is, whoever it is, the fear of that. So it's like you allowed them to cross those boundaries, but then eventually, you grow a spine and you start putting your foot down when they're crossing these boundaries. And I think that is where you start to see that the narcissist is never going to stop crossing these boundaries, which then leads to low contact or no contact, which is gray rock um, is low contact or no contact. And I think, um, when you start putting your foot down, you stop being a willing participant and you start to back up from the situation and say, the, the fear that I have that so-and-so is going to be upset with me. Well, you know, I honestly don't care if they're going to be upset because these are my boundaries. I'm a human being. I deserve respect. And so you start putting your foot down, but you find that the narcissist just does not care. They don't care. And this is why it, it, it's led to no contact. But after you go no contact, first off, it's really hard to tell the narcissist that you're no contact. But at the same time, it's easy because you are standing up for yourself and you're standing up for your boundaries. And so you know, to have that control in your life, it's like you're you're not really 
fearing the no contact in that aspect, but you fear the reaction of other people when you go no contact with the narcissist. But then once you do lay those boundaries down and you go no contact, that hamster wheel starts. Those emotions start because for the first time, you get to feel things. You get to think about things and you get to say to yourself, that's not going to happen anymore. But you overanalyze everything because you're an empathic person. You want to make sure that you're making the right decision. And it's like your unconscious and your conscious arguing, your subconscious and your conscious arguing with itself in some weird way. Because you really wanna make sure you're making the right decision because this no contact is a big deal. It's upsetting everyone, it's causing havoc, and now your narcissist is trying to manipulate more and, and it's just starting a big mess, right? What I can say is if you find yourself obsessing over past traumas, past experiences, your past, you know, memory with them. What I like to say is you have to retrain your brain, retrain your thought patterns, because for years you've been arguing with yourself about how dare her do that? How, how dare he did that? I can't believe I let that person do that. And then once you get no contact, all those arguments are still there. And so you have to retrain that pattern of obsession, that pattern of thought, negative thought, to move forward in life. And it is uh, CPTSD, Complex Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, is the reason why you are obsessing over it. Because you have been traumatized so many times and they're not huge traumas maybe they have been but there are a lot of little traumas consecutively right after each other and nobody's addressing the past traumas and they just keep happening and happening happening and so that's com com that's cptsd um and you find that those intrusive thoughts are just entering all day long and you want answers but we know that the narcissist will never give you the answers. And so you have to find it within yourself to find those answers during the practice of retraining your negative thoughts. And how you do that, what I found helpful, is when I started obsessing over a situation, or just about the situation as a whole, I took a deep breath, I closed my eyes, and I counted backwards from 30. I know it sounds kind of stupid, but you're trying to redirect your thoughts. And then after you're done counting backwards, you're going to do something that is positive. If that means putting on a good um, movie, listening to your favorite song, going and taking a walk, which is extremely uh, important. It clears your head. Doing stuff like spending time with your children, with your animals, whatever it is, to redirect those negative thoughts into positive thoughts, something positive in your life. And I'm not gonna lie, it's difficult. I am... Um, and really, I think I just came up with this concept because every time I was obsessing over it, I'm like, all right, Natalie, that's enough. Quit it. You're doing it again. You're doing it again. And I would just try to focus on something positive. I can tell you that it took practice. It's difficult to do that because you're trying to retrain a habit or obsession. And oh, what I noticed is... Over time, my obsessive thoughts became less and less and less more, you know, active. And it 
you know, and I'm not going to lie. It took a lot of remembering in that moment of that obsession to say to yourself, okay, stop, just stop. I'm letting this rule my life. I'm going to go do something positive, taking a walk, exercising, whatever it is. And you soon find after you start doing that positive thing for a minute or two, that your obsessive thoughts will calm down. And then you're in the moment of that positive, positive activity and the negative thoughts are now excluded out of your thought pattern but it takes a lot of practice you're not just going to automatically just start thinking positive when you think you're thinking negative you have to literally tell yourself okay that's it i'm not thinking this way and you're going to move on to something positive um, you will find by doing this over time that the obsessive thoughts, the intruding thoughts really do become less significant in your life. And then you find that you're living your life for you and not living it in the past. Because that's the goal here of retraining your negative thought patterns is so you can live in the moment now and not in the past. Because the past happened, you have to accept it, get over it, and move forward. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you stay within that cycle and you are trying to break this cycle. That is why you're going no contact because you just cannot take the abusive cycle anymore. But then you find that then you have a cycle of intrusive thoughts due to the abuse. And then you're not living your life in the moment. You're living it for the narc. And believe it or not, the narc is getting supply, regardless if they know you are obsessing over it or not. And especially they will know if you are going on social media, putting poems about how broken your heart is, talking about narcissistic family dynamics, trying to expose the narcissist, going and telling people on social media in the comments, uh, what your family did, telling people on social media your life story, things like that. The narcissist finds that and they, with their little grubby fingers, are, are getting that supply and just soaking it in, eating it up. But if you don't want to give your narcissist supply, then start living for you. Stop living like that with the narcissist and the obsessive thoughts. Because if you really think about it deeply, when you have these obsessive thoughts and you continue talking about the narcissist, you're living for the narcissist. You're not living for you. And the whole reason why you went no contact is because you were tired of dealing or living for the narcissist. So you want no contact, but here you are still living with the narcissist having those obsessive thoughts. So you have to find it within yourself to get the answers that your subconscious is looking for and consciously journal them, uh, you know, whatever you need to do to soak in the knowledge that you need to move forward. Because at this point, if you're obsessing over it, who are you living for? So you have to find ways to accept it and get the answers you're looking for through your own personal journey, through your experience, through education through videos like mine and other people's. You're going to answer your own questions that you have that you wanted to answer, uh, get answered by the narcissist. The narcissist is not going to answer those. Remember, they're 
the victim. So you go and ask nar a narcissist to explain themselves, they will play the victim, which then in return, they are accusing you of being the perpetrator. So then they put a guilt trip on you, which confuses you, cognitive dissonance, ding, 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 ding. They gaslight you. They make you turn the situation around on you when all you were looking for was an apology, an explanation. So this is why I'm saying when you're having all these intrusive thoughts because you want an explanation, because you're a good person. You deserve it. Um, you're just going to have to look within yourself and everything else I suggested, the videos and education, to find those answers you're looking for. Because it's not just going to happen. And if you don't do the work on yourself, you won't heal. You won't get very far. You will stay in this cycle of repetitive thought patterns that are negative. It takes work, people. When I am telling you what I did to heal and move forward and stop the obsessive thoughts, it was work. You have to work to get what you are looking for. It's not going to be handed to you on a sil silver platter. And if you're not willing to work for those answers for that healing you're not going to get very far so it's up to you to heal it's up to you to answer those questions and really dig deep figure out these questions journal find out what works for you when you're thinking negatively and the way that you see what will work for you to redirect those negative thoughts into something positive. Maybe it's knitting, maybe it's drawing or painting or singing or like, you know, whatever it is. And that's the thing. When you're dealing with the narcissist, they have taken everything that makes you away and some of these things you haven't done for years and so you're going to incorporate some of your past loves drawing skating whatever it is back into your life and start living the life that you want to live because i'm sure you've been ridiculed by the narcissist so much that you gave up the loves in your life you may have even given up people. Call your old friend that the narcissist didn't like. Garden without being ridiculed about how crappy your garden looks. Do whatever makes you happy. Because a repetitive, intrusive thoughts will not leave if you do not do the work. Find a peace within your inner self to make yourself happy again. Because the human mind and body can overcome a lot. And if you're willing to work for it, you will receive it. That's the truth. There was so many times that I had a pity party for myself, but because I didn't do the work, nothing changed. When you start putting in the work, your life and everything around it will change the way that you want it. And hopefully that's positive. But it takes you. And the fear that comes along with this no contact and uh, repetitive thoughts and all this stuff, you soon see that that fear was more of an obligation to be in a relationship with the narcissist because they dangled carrots. And if 
you actually take a step back and look at what manipulation tactics the narcissist used on you to force you in this relationship, you will see that those things that they, the manipulations was all a way for the narcissist to can have control over you. It wasn't out of love. It was out of fear. The only way they saw that they can control you was putting fear in you. And there's nothing to be fearful of. Things get better and that fear that you have at first, it does get better. The guilt might take a little bit longer than the fear to go away because these are years of the, the guilt that's, you know, that you have. But the fear goes away pretty quickly because you are fearful that everything the narc said was going to happen to you will happen, but it doesn't. It was just the way the narc controlled you, really. And the fear does diminish over time. And then you, you soon see, why did I ever fear this? Life is fine. The money that I need to pay rent, whatever. I will work as hard as I can. What I'm just using that as an excuse or as an example. Whatever it is that the narc had you fearing, it doesn't come to fruition. It was just a manipulative tactic to keep their thumb on you. So once you start seeing that those fears aren't coming true, then you find that you can start living the life without remorse or guilt or shame and you get to experience new things without being judged or ridiculed. So I hope I did a little bit explain. I know in my other video, I just kind of had like this conversation, but I thought maybe I should go in this a little deeper just because, I don't know, I, I, my brain thinks a lot, guys, and I get deep in my thoughts. <laughs> so I hope you appreciate <laughs> those deep thinking moments. But um, things will get better. All those obsessive thoughts, all that fear, all the guilt, all the shame, it soon do it does diminish over time. It's not gonna happen just because you go no contact and you expect it to happen in a month. It's not. It takes you doing the work to get your life back. Because even though the narcissist stole your life for however long, doesn't mean because you went no contact, all of a sudden there's gonna be sunshine and rainbows over your head. So do the work, pay attention, redirect your thinking, and start living your best life. It's going to take time, but over time, the anger and the guilt and everything starts, starts to be a thing of the past. Because I can tell you one thing, you're definitely going to get angry once the guilt kind of calms down, the anger comes, and you think, how the hell did this happen to me? Why did I allow this to happen? Why did this person treat me this way? And that's also where a lot of the repetitive thoughts come from is from your anger. But go ahead and feel those emotions. Find out how to resolve those, which that is deep, diving deep within yourself and looking for the answers that you will not get from the narcissist. Move past the anger and start living the life that you want, drama-free, abuse-free. And you will see that you, as a person, will open up and become whatever it is that you want to become. You have no one ridiculing you, belittling you, abusing you. You can do whatever you want. 
You can be whoever you want to be. Who cares? Once you go no contact, who cares what the narcissist has to say about you? You live the life that you want to live. And you will see that everything around you, people, places, and things will change for the better. You no longer look at, the, um, at life in the same light. Everything around you, it almost turns magical because you're experiencing, you're experiencing it for the first time in a very long time. And hopefully that will give you some serotonin and adrenaline and then you're excited and you'll just kind of get back on the wagon and start living your life the way you want to live it, no matter who's watching, no matter who's looking, has anybody, whatever they have to say, you don't care. You live your best life. And let me tell you something. If you live your best life, you are defeating the narcissist, period. The narcissist does not want you to live your best life because they have established fear and guilt in you to feel shame for going no contact. Or even when you were in contact, you still had those feelings. So it to see, and that's the thing, you see? You still have fear and guilt and whatever it is that you feel about the narcissist. You, the narcissist still makes you feel like that regardless if you're in contact or no contact. That's why it's important when you go no contact, you work on yourself because nothing... Nothing really kills the narc more than you being successful in your own journey. Be the success that you've always wanted to be. And I don't mean that like, you know, in your job or anything. You personally be the success. You be that person that you know, the narcissist will hear about or see and you're doing so good, it angers them. That they know nothing, nothing could hold you back. And this shows the narcissist that they never, ever, that you never, ever needed them to begin with. That they only held you back. The narcissist hates to see you doing good. And that's the thing, regardless if you're in contact or no contact, they're, they're always gonna be critical of you. They're always gonna make you feel a certain way that's not positive. So you might as well go no contact because at least if you go no contact, you have the opportunity to heal and work on yourself. That's the goal. You want to you want to get these intrusive thoughts, the guilt, the, the shame, the fear out of you. You have to be brave and do the work. And you might find yourself crying for days doing the work. But you'll get there and it gets better. All right guys, peace, love, harmony. And Friday, remember is our Zoom. So, um more than welcome to join. I will leave it in a video, the information for the Zoom. All right, bye guys.